This is the 2024 Toyota Tundra Platinum Edition, along with the TRD Off-Road Package. Today we're out at our mountain test course in central Washington to have some fun, do a little work, and then put it to the test. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Just a few days ago, I used this 2024 Toyota Tundra to tow a Polaris General 4 XP1000 Ultimate to our mountain test course. The Polaris, combined with its trailer, weighed 5,500 pounds. And I have to say, towing with this rig, super easy. It has plenty of power, very comfortable, and it tracks great. MPGs, not the best, but when you're considering the amount that it was towing, they're really not that bad the computer registered 9.9 .9 miles to the gallon. Now for comparison, I just drove here in the same vehicle with no trailer and I averaged 16. Now keep in mind, I'm going from sea level to 4,000 feet at the pass to 2,000 feet where I'm standing now. So there is a lot of elevation and climbing involved. After unloading the Polaris, I used its handy tilt bed to help build up the rock crossing portion of the Sidewinder. Sure, I could have used the truck for this, but then I'd have rocks rolling all over the bed. And on this particular day, the course was very wet and very muddy since it was raining all morning. Without mud tires, any normal pickup would have had serious issues getting in and out of the course. So now, a few days later, I'm back. And yeah, the course has dried up a bunch compared to how it was a few days ago. However, it has been very, very cold. When I'm starting to film here, it's 23 degrees, and that means frost. When the frost melts, it can introduce some moisture, but not enough to be troublesome today. However, it could actually help the vehicle uh, by providing a little more grip than a completely dry situation. But that's fine. We're still gonna put this Tundra to the test. The big news for 2024 is that you can finally get the TRD off-road package on the high-end Platinum trim. That means you can have all the deluxe features without giving up off-road capability. Like before, the Tundra is available with the iForce Max Twin Turbo V6 Hybrid Powertrain. This produces up to 473 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission with a dual-speed transfer case. Four-wheel drive is a part-time selectable system. The model we have here is a crew cab and it has the 5.5 foot bed. A six foot bed is also available. In the back here, it lowers slowly. And then we also get AC power as well as of course a composite bed, which is kind of a Toyota trademark. Price of our test vehicle, as you see it here, 74,317 US dollars, including destination. The 2023 Polaris General XP4 1000 Ultimate adds about another $35,000 as equipped. Together as a set, you're still looking at less than the price of a single Hummer H1T electric. So I guess that's kind of cool. The TRD off-road package upgrades every trim with some really nice off-road focused hardware. The all-season tires are swapped out with the special OEM versions of the Falcon Wild Peak wrapped around blacked out alloy wheels. The package also adds a rear locking differential, Bilstein off-road tuned suspension, a leather wrapped shift knob, and a heated steering wheel. Of course, you also get Toyota's excellent multi-terrain select traction management system in addition to crawl control. As an extra option, our test vehicle was also fitted with a TRD front skid plate. Now let's see if this full-size truck can tackle a full-size challenge. Okay, let's do this. I do like the interior of this new Tundra. I think it's it's actually really useful, effective, and kind of cool. I mean, the 14-inch display, it's a bit much, but you know, if you like big displays, there you go. 
Now over here, the digital gauge cluster, you really can't customize it a lot. Uh, there's basically only a slot on the left that you can modify uh, to show relevant data, uh, such as tire pressures, which currently I'm showing that we're about 35 to 37 all around, and I am not planning on modifying those, unless of course we have trouble getting up the ladder, in which case I might air down. This does have a number of active safety features that we do not plan on using today. Uh, collision mitigation, blind spot warning, adaptive cruise control with lane centering. Yeah, it's basically, it's a fully loaded truck. And I have done multiple reviews of the new Tundra, and this is unchanged as far as the actual truck goes. Uh, the only real difference for 2024 is that you can get this upper platinum trim along with the TRD off-road package, which of course adds all of the off-road goodies. Backing up using that nice, glorious camera with a full surround view to get aligned for the first run. Now, the first thing I'm just gonna do here is I'm just gonna go around, go for run, which is our very um, easy outer perimeter course, just to kind of get used to the truck and the off-road condition that we got here. Now, the wheels included here are lacquered black, which I always kind of hate in an off-road trim uh, because they just scratch very easy. Uh, so hopefully we don't run into any issues with that today. I always hate damaging manufacturer vehicles. I am gonna go ahead and switch into four high, which I can do while I'm rolling. Uh, that'll engage four wheel drive, which yeah, it is part-time on this truck and I really would have liked it to have been full-time or at least have a full-time option, but it is what it is. Now, the nice thing is that unlike the Colorado, which I have had a mm, couple issues with, <laughs> um, this one, it's a pretty solid system. You're not gonna have it slipping out of four wheel drive on you. Uh, whereas clutch based systems, yeah, they've done that to me in the past. Oh, that's bright. Just ease up here. I'm not doing anything. Like I am just putting in some throttle. We're just rolling up this really steep incline. All is good. And this is a big truck. Make no uh, mistake. Out here on our test hill, you know, it doesn't look very big, but yeah, you get this in the city and you're going to have trouble parallel parking unless you are a master of the parallel park. Of course, the tires on here are Falcon Wild Peaks, or as I've seen in the comment section, some people call them Mild Peaks. Uh, and that is because these are the OEM version of the tire. They have less tread and they don't have a snow rating uh, like the actual Wild Peak AT3Ws you can go out and buy. So, eh... Yeah, the fact that it has wild peaks is a yay. The fact that they're the OEM version makes it kind of eh. One thing I don't really understand about this package is why does it have 20 inch matte black wheels? Like you wanna talk about something that's gonna scratch? Yeah, it's 20 inch matte black wheels. <laughs> this is our newly modified rock crossing on Sidewinder and uh, Never driven a vehicle other than a side-by-side -side over it. And of course, side-by-sides have massive amount of clearance. Uh, so huh, eh, this is going to be interesting. Let's take a quick look at the course. So the biggest change is just simply more rocks. I added another layer to the inside. I built up this portion right here. This didn't even exist before. And then I added this big boulder right in the middle. Now, is there a good chance that this boulder will absolutely run against the differential on the back of this truck? Absolutely. Yeah, maybe that boulder wasn't actually a good one to put there. Oh well, let's see how it does. Uh, let's go into the trail cam mode. To do that, I have to go into four low and I'm gonna switch the MTS mode into rock because I want the least amount of wheel spin. You start spinning wheels, you start kicking rocks, and then you start denting things. We don't want to do that. Turn on my front view. There we go. I got my cool trail camera that includes angles vaguely uh, as well as side views and then tracking lines, which are very important. I did wish that they had upgraded the resolution on the front view. It still seems a little on the low side. So before I totally slam this, I'm going to just roll the truck right up to where that boulder is and take a look at our clearance. As soon as I open the door, it engages the parking brake. I think we'll be okay. So the biggest potential issue here is as I'm clearing it, because I think I can do the approach fine, uh, but as I'm driving over it, 
Uh, it's possible that the vehicle will settle uh, due to the long wheelbase in an inopportune position. So let's uh, hope that doesn't happen. It's going to go slow and listen for grinding. So I do have this wonderful camera, but the problem with the camera is that it has so much glare on this screen. I'm just seeing reflections of my own hands, which makes it kind of difficult to see over. Listen for grinding. We should be lifting now, going up and over. Oh yeah. Cool. So as far as geometry goes, for a full-size truck, pretty good. And then the final climb out. Now we don't need to be in MTS Rock for this. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this just to auto. Why not? And up we go. Woo! <laughs> yeah, no problem. Man, that thing keeps beeping. I just want to keep my camera on. Why won't you just stay on? Wow, that sun is harsh this time of year. So we just went over Sidewinder, uh, the rock crossing, but I think that I want to try the rock crossing again, but I want to go on the right side of the rocks. Uh, for that crossing, I did the left side, which is the easier side. Now, I didn't intend necessarily to take the easy route, but it's kind of hard to see this camera with so much glare on it. Uh, so let's try that again. Gonna go wide here, cut over, cause big truck. Again, camera turned off, goes back on when I'm in reverse. God, man, turn, keep camera on. Uh, oh, let's turn it on auto. Should stay on this way, at least be a little bit better. So we'll just ease down the hill as we try this again. those proximity sensors constantly going off. Yes, I know there's grass there. Let's get by. So this time I am going to try to hold it all the way to the right. And I can't really see anything over this massive hood. So camera wise, let's try to just drive right over there. I wanna go as far right as possible without actually um, scratching these 20 inch wheels. So MTS, let's go to rock again so we don't have excessive wheel spin. So I should be just, according to the camera, my wheels are tracking directly over the right side. Listening for grinding. Oop, nothing. Wow, that was, again, very easy. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's put a crossover there and see how that little thing struggles, right? Oh, man, that sun. Well, I, that was pretty easy. So now let's move on to something a little harder. Let's just go straight to the ladder, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I have rock on, so it's trying not to spin the tires. But it got up there. <laughs> let's, let's put it back on auto. Okay. Now on to... The ladder and blindness from the sun. So I'm going to put it in drive. I'm in low, and that's mostly so I can get all of my MTS modes. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to do rock. It's sand. Yeah, because we want some wheel spin. We don't want it to cut throttle. I am going to put the locker on and back. So that is on. So we have locker, we have sand. Uh, we're in drive, and let's just see if we can get up this. Man, I love the sound of this truck. Whew, that sun is harsh. Now, I'm just trying to keep an easy throttle. This is very steep. This is more than 28 degrees. Up we go. Oh, yeah, no problem. All you have to have is a little bit of moisture, and you get so much more grip. We got another test to do here. Let's try out the crawl control system as a hill descent system. Oop. Oh, 
grinding there. For this, I am going to go ahead and just turn on the hill descent control and crawl system. Now, there's two different modes here. Um, if I'm in four high and I hit the DAC crawl button, it puts me into a hill descent system. Uh, if I am in four low, it puts it into a crawl system. Uh, so first, we're going to use the DAC, and I'm going to show you how that works. Go into drive, hit the DAC button. Okay, when I hit it, I can use the dial to dial in the speed that I want to go. Let's do the minimum, which is three, and I release the brakes, and I go down very smoothly, it, you, ugh, and everything falls forward. <laughs> Basically uses all four wheels to brake, um, and it logically will do it to keep me going straight. It's not the same as just putting your foot on the brake, because that breaks all four wheels, and standard traction control uh, won't save you if you start sliding. Now let's look at the other version, which is crawl control. I basically put the vehicle into four low, and now it gives me four different speeds, low one, two, and high one, two, plus mid, uh, to add power to the equation. So I'm not just adding wheel braking, it's also using a very uh, capable power distribution system so that not only when I s will it keep me from sliding downhill, it'll also keep me powering uphill. So let's keep this in the lowest setting right now and we're just easing down. Now, if I wanna go faster, I can just dial it up to the next speed. And this is all like within, like I'm at speed two and I'm doing one mile per hour. That is how careful this system is. And we're at a, tw I can feel wheels slipping a little bit, but it's grabbing and it's keeping me easing down very, very carefully, which is awesome. Now, can we use crawl control to go up the hill as well? Of course, let's do it. So for this, I have it in crawl control. Obviously we've already made it up, so this is really just a bonus round. Uh, I would not personally use crawl control for this type of a climb, but uh, let's see if we can do it. So we're gonna have mid DAC crawl on, we're in low. I'm not locking that rear diff because it's just gonna use wheel brakes uh, to emulate a locker. Yeah, I could turn it on, but let's just see what it does. So I take my foot off the gas. No gas, no brake. We just let the, the truck do its stuff. Now we're going up very slow, which I know on this course, going a little bit faster is usually advantageous, so you're not deadlifting the vehicle up so much, using a little momentum as a benefit. But, let's see how this system does. If it can manage its power, then we should be fine, especially because we have a little moisture in the soil today. Yeah, there we go. Crawl control, it's pretty cool. I really would have liked to have given you comparable conditions to when we have the ZR2 out here, but the one thing we cannot control is the weather. Now let's go up the hill for a victory pose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a little rough. Oh, man, this thing has got power. <laughs> right on. Okay, so that's our off-road test of the 2024 Platinum Edition of the Toyota Tundra. Uh, this thing made it up everything, and it made it look really easy, even with these knockoff Wild Peak tires. Okay, they're not really knockoffs, but the OEM version of the Wild Peak. We are expecting snow in the next month or so. And when we get snow, we will try to test this truck out again right here at our mountain test course. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. Make them for you. I hope you enjoy them.